there's a lot of people that don't know what the term prepper is. And, and honestly, it's as simple as be prepared. We're just preparing for the unknown. Well, hello, everybody. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. And listen, prepping, right? We don't want to all consider ourselves as preppers. Some of us don't mind it, but some of us think of that word as like a bad word. I don't know why, but, you know, to some degree, when you buy precious metals, you are a prepper. And I recently had the opportunity to talk to a Florida resident who actually has a shop where he does prepping supplies and there's some silver in there some ammo camping supplies uh some stuff that you really you know should look at and think about a little bit so it's a really fun interview i'm a little sick under the weather don't worry it's not the rona i got tested it's negative but through the power and magic of the internet i was able to do an interview with him on instagram and i want to show you that that instagram live video because it was actually really really cool that uh he has such a neat shop and a time when i think People are really opening their eyes to prepping. So stay with me as I talk to Pirate Prepping in his shop here in Florida. I'm going to be live here with a member of the community called the Pirate prepping and uh gonna show you his store i hope so just tell us a little bit about you and your store please yeah so i am pirate prepping formerly pirate stacker who you all know and love uh the store came about because like so many of you i'm a prepper at heart as well as a stacker and i couldn't find what i was looking for so you know i I'd, I'd scour the different stores they'd be out of merchandise and uh, I'd order stuff from Amazon and here and there, and it wouldn't be what I was expecting. And I got frustrated. And a buddy of mine, he was in the same boat. So we decided to get together and, uh, and open our own store, which is Prep Spot here in DeBerry, Florida. And uh, that's it. It's born. Literally, we opened the doors two months ago. We just had a grand opening, and we've never looked back. <laughs> that's that's awesome and hopefully you're going to show us a little bit of the story here in a minute but i want to say that you know when we are stackers of precious metals uh, a lot of us are technically preppers whether we want to believe so or not and i remember an old timer in the job that i had he asked me years back i had never heard of this term before he goes are you into prepping and i'm like i don't know what that is he told me about the whole thing and and i think it's a good idea and we've seen recently these last couple of years or so that everybody should prep in some way am i wrong yeah, I mean, now more than ever, if, if it's not obvious to you at this point, then, uh, you know, you, you're not looking hard enough. Truthfully, there's a lot of people that don't know what the term prepper is. And, and honestly, it's as simple as be prepared. We're just preparing for the unknown. So, you know, if having a little is good, then a lot is better. And it really is just a matter of giving yourself options. So this really started for me when I was a kid. My family was big into food storage. They were Mormons. And, uh, you know, we always had two years of food storage. I didn't think of that as prepping, but it was literally there in case of hard times or to be able to share with other people on hard times. And, uh, and that was really like the start of prepping for me. And, uh, and that's really all this is. We're not some extremist group. Uh, we are just normal, everyday people that are trying to be prepared for whatever may come to us, whether it's a natural disaster or political fallout. It doesn't have to be anything sinister. You could just lose your job and, and want to be able to feed your family. So, Yeah, or supply chain shortages, which we've been seeing, right? It'd be nice to have something in our cupboard just in case. Yeah, I mean, and, and that goes along with the gear. I mean, we see it at the grocery store. There's shelves that are bare and certain canned goods you're looking for aren't there. But also, you know, you start looking for gear. When you're starting to look for water purification options and things of that nature, that stuff's becoming even more rare. Uh, everybody's got the same idea at this point, and it's hard to get that stuff. Yeah. Can you show us a little bit of what you got in the store? Yeah, so we basically, we came into this with the mindset of, you know, we're trying to appeal to everybody. So it really is a survival slash outdoor slash prepping. You know, we, we try to encompass all of it. So 
we have your bags, obviously bags and gear. That's a necessity, necessary, necessity. Hey, I like that uh, new word, the necessary. That's going to yeah, be a new word, I guarantee you. <laughs> uh, but Sawyer Minis, you know, water purification options. Here in Florida, we got lots of water, but there's a lot of bacteria in that. Uh, camping gear, you know, we have a lot of food and pantry stuff. Your mountain house meals, your MREs, survival bars. Uh, we want to hold on one second. Yeah, with the with the meals, tell people why those kind of meals right there are better than just something you buy at the store. Yeah, so the cool thing about these Mountain House in particular, this is a thirty year Best Buy date. It's Best Buy December of twenty fifty. Uh, this is freeze dried food. It actually tastes very good. You just add hot water, and you got a great meal. So these are great. You know, we, we encourage everyone to have what we call a working pantry in their house. That's the food you eat on a regular basis and canned goods. But this is stuff you can stock, you know, put in your bug out bag, put it underneath your bed and stick it away for a while. Uh, so that's just a quick, available, easy to store food. You know, and then, of course, this is our MREs. You know, these are humanitarian daily rations. I mean, that's 2,200 calories. That's a day's worth of food for somebody, you know? And so we got that kind of stuff, which we encourage people to have. Um, but we have a little bit of everything in here, you know, and slingshots and gas cans. Uh, we've just started picking up on the survival gear, you know, obviously rope and, and paracord. That's important. We have some pre-made 72 hour bug out bags here. And uh, here's some of the solar we just got in, which is cool because here in Florida, we lose power about every other week. Wow. And uh, so there's some options. And then, of course, we got the generator. We got some knives and silver for all my stacker friends there, some copper, a little bit that's, of the. That's awesome. We got silver keepers. right there on the table. Yeah, right here. I mean, we're anything we're thinking about and wanting other people are thinking about and wanting to first aid obviously one of the most important things but scanners and flashlights you know all that kind of stuff comes into play so really anything that you need to be prepared whether it's a power outage or a storm or if you just want to go camping hell we got s'mores kits you can throw together so <laughs> any anything on that vein we're trying to have Make it easy for you. Put it all in one place, and you can come here and get it. Now, how long have you been open now? It's pretty pretty recent. Yeah, we actually opened up October 10th. So we've been open just over two months. We just did our, uh, our grand opening last Saturday. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have a couple of, uh, a couple of stackers in the community that have come by. Uh, so that was really cool. Name, name drop inefficient stacker and triple P. But uh, anyway, you know, a lot of us people in the stacking community, we're preppers as well, and they really do go hand in hand. And uh, so it's neat just to be able to encourage others, show them some basic things, give them ideas, get ideas from them as well. And uh, yeah, you know, do, do right by your community, be a part of the community. I guess that was one of my questions too, the get ideas from others. Since you've been opened for a little while now, I bet you have preppers coming in from all different levels and they say like hey you guys should carry this or you should carry that and you're like man that actually is a pretty good idea you've probably evolved well, as a company already as a store yeah I, and i'd really like to encourage people one of the greatest things about opening this shop has been just that it has brought people from all around my community as well as people as far as two hours away have driven just to check out the store which is very flattering for sure but the greatest asset you can have in being prepared is having that community, the people. People are where it's at. So you make these connections with people and, you know, maybe one's a paramedic. Maybe another guy is a carpenter. Maybe another guy is a, a gardener, you know. And those connections, that's far better of a prep than anything you can buy and shove under your bed. And uh, so that's really been the greatest thing. Get out and meet like-minded people, become friends, share knowledge, and uh, you'll all be better for it, for sure. Yeah, because if there's a disaster, you guys are going to need to uh, be some kind of uh, allies. You know what I mean? You're going to have friends. You're right. 
Yeah, nobody wants to be alone. And I mean, it's a lot of this stuff is really simple. You know, just since meeting some people, a lady, she needed to get a, uh, she had an opportunity to get a giant water container. And it was like a, one of those big cube on a pallet, like, I don't know, 500 gallon water containers. She couldn't pick it up. All she needed was somebody with a truck. She didn't have these connections. You know, since then, we actually went out and got it for her. So, you know, it's something as simple as knowing someone with a truck, knowing who has a chainsaw, uh, any of that stuff. Once you make that connection and they're just a phone call or a text away, it really does change your life. And it will change it profoundly in an emergency situation. So yeah, that's really smart. You know, <clears throat> I think a lot of people that don't understand the prepping thing, they look at preppers like, oh, these guys are weird. These guys are extremists. They go above and beyond. But I remember when I was a kid here in Florida, there was a, a major hurricane coming by. And I'm watching the news as a kid. And it just devastated this whole like mobile home area. And I remember this, you know, news uh, guy taking this woman's story. And uh, she goes, she was in tears. She's like, I just want to brush my teeth so bad. She's like, if anybody has any toothpaste, please, I need toothpaste so bad. And it's just like, everybody needs to prep in some way. It's just so, yeah, it's, it's essential right now. Yeah. And, and people forget, like, again, this isn't a, uh, th this isn't a political thing. Um, you can make it political. That's not what this is about. This is honestly the simplest preparations are things that you will enjoy most down the line. And, and just like that person, how, how easy is it for somebody to get an extra tube of toothpaste in for when the shops are down that they've got an extra tube or extra soap or a little extra water in a container? Like these are things we take for granted because we have them every day. But imagine if you don't. Imagine if you can't go to the store for two weeks. Imagine any of that. And that's all this is. We're just talking about the simplest things can make your life that much more comfortable. And it can help those around you as well. And one thing I would encourage people that are already prepping, I tell them all the time, I still go to the dollar store. I still go and buy dollar items at the dollar store. Now it's a dollar twenty-five. Go figure. I know, I know. But uh, but still, I buy that stuff. You know, they have basic medicine. They have candles. They have just stuff. And a lot of that, I'm pretty well prepped. But I've got friends and family that I care about that I know are not prepped. And so that stuff is great because I literally have a big Rubbermaid container full of it. And whenever anything happens, I'm able to go into that container, grab a bag fill it full of stuff and just give it to them. And it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't make a hardship on me, but it made that person's life that much more simple. And you don't have to be in an emergency for that to come in handy. I've, I've gone into there many times to give a neighbor something late at night or this or that. And, uh, and again, that's just part of being prepared. So prepping is really an everybody thing. Even if you don't prep, you probably do prep in one way or another. And if you don't, you should really think about it. Yeah, for sure. Now, <clears throat> the store, how do people like it? What's, what's been the consensus? So people love it. And, and we're truly, because we open this up, so like we're just average dudes. Me and my buddy, uh, you know, we saw a need. We're into the stuff. And so we, fu we funded it all ourselves. Uh, in fact, I actually cashed in some silver in order to open up the shop itself. Um, and that for me, that was a, a worthwhile decision. Um, so we, we did it from the ground up, which meant a lot of our stuff is kind of entry level price point, like beginner prepper stuff. So if you're a new prepper, this store is fantastic. We can kit you out. Most of it is lower end, so it's not too expensive. Uh, the consensus though, the people looking for our store are your advanced preppers, your experienced guys. They see it pop up on Google Maps, Prep Spot. Is that a survival store? What is what is Prep Spot? They know what prepping is. They're curious. They come in immediately. It's like a playground. They love the store. <laughs> but most of them, most of them have this entry level stuff. They're looking for this stuff. They want the solar stuff. They want the cool toys that they don't have already. And so that's really what we're trying to focus on now is getting in that kind of
higher level, you know, mid to higher level stuff. We want to have generators, inverters, solar chargers, all of that. You know, that's uh, that's going to be a big focus for us moving forward. So the consensus is they love the store. They love that it brings awareness. We're growing with the community, and that's our goal in general. But I'll tell you what, it's like a giant man cave in here. I have Rambo on the TV and stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot of fun. If I got to go to a second job, this is really where I want to be. So... Yeah, it looks like a really fun place. I, I definitely want to go in there and check it out. Now, you're not shipping anything out, right? You're just kind of staying local? Yeah, so, you know, I've actually had some viewers that have seen me show some stuff, uh, you know, from my channel, and they've, they've made orders, and I've shipped them out to them. We aren't currently set up uh, with an online store as of yet. We are working on a website and getting that, that added. It'll be in the new year. But what we did just start today – uh, was I started the $100 war, weekly war chest. And basically, I take a USPS priority box. I fill it with 100 bucks or so worth of gear. And for 100 bucks, that ships to your door. Everything that I show in the video, first person to buy it now gets the lot of it. So today, I, I did a video, and, uh, and it sold immediately. Um, amazingly enough so cool. so that was really cool so we'll be doing that weekly you'll be able to get that hundred dollar war chest and start up in your prepping <laughs> do you want to give out like a phone number address and stuff like that for people who they want to contact you they, they want to do business locally yeah that's great i don't actually know my phone number so i know i i suck but we're, we're located. guys we're guys we don't know phone numbers it's, it, prep, we got it in the prep, phone yeah prep spot in deberry 134 south Charles Richard Beal Boulevard, and that's DeBerry, Florida, 32713. That's our store. We're open 10 to 6, Monday through Saturday. Uh, but we're on Facebook heavy. We post daily. So if you're on Facebook, check out Prep Spot. Uh, you can follow our channel there. We've also got a community group. So if you're in Central Florida, you want to stay hip to what's happening, you can join our community group also. And then look for us on YouTube pirate prepping i'm on there you know showing stuff and giving some uh, prepping advice and then here as well on uh, instagram pirate prepping and uh, i sure appreciate your time having us on the show this has been fantastic a lot of fun i hope people get some benefit from it and uh yeah uh, listen i appreciate you letting me see your shop and showing other people your shop for sure now my idea is to put this onto youtube as well so is that okay that's all right with you yeah, YouTube, definitely. And uh, that'll be awesome. We'll put this video on rotation here in the shop. So we'll put it on the big screen. Everyone can walk in and see it on uh, on the TV and uh, see Spectacular and Pirate Prepping doing a, a co-show here. This is a lot of fun. Can I show you some of my prepping things that I have? I brought to, you can kind of evaluate and tell me if I'm a good prepper or not. Yeah, show me. I love prepping stuff. So this is stuff that I learned from my mom. You know, again, hurricanes, power outages constantly in Florida. Uh, candles, you know, usually larger size candles and like uh, like little lanterns. Uh, we're all about that uh, in this house. What do you think about that? A little lighter situation, a little candle yeah, all over so, the place? So the tea lights are great. You can put a little light up. They last, you know, probably mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes, which is fantastic. What's really good is if you go to Dollar Tree or one of those, they have those big latin candles like you know with the mother mary or the jesus on them and they're really tall those things last something like 12 hours for one dollar and yeah, good uh, advice so those work really great just to have a few of those around the house you can also uh, melt that down or just drip it onto some of your dryer lint or some paper for for a good fire starter so even if it's wet, it'll continue to burn for a few minutes to uh, catch your fire. So, yeah, candles are A+. Plus. <laughs> All right, here's another one. Now, not necessarily the healthiest food, but you know what? I'm prepping right now, so I'm not on a diet. Uh, white rice. And you can just get this in any store. Yeah, so white rice, as far as bang for your buck, there is nothing cheaper than white rice. You get more calories out of white rice than anything else. And if you can take it a step further, if you're getting it for long-term storage, get some Mylar bags, get some oxygen absorbers, and drop them into a five-gallon bucket, which that's something we offer here as well. 
So the Mylar bags in that with the oxygen absorbers, that just extends that shelf life so you don't get any bugs or critters in it. But white rice, you know, it's super cheap. 20 pounds of rice is like 10, 12 bucks. Now, of course, just to satisfy all my uh, silver lovers on the channel, of course, I got some silver. You know what I mean? Some, just some constitutional right here. No big deal. Yeah. Maybe, so maybe con a bar or two. Copper. Yeah, you you know you know better than anybody, but I, absolutely, constitutional is one of my favorite. And uh, as as a prepper, I got into silver through constitutional. Uh, it was just to have some fractional silver to be able to barter with in a hard time. And, uh, and that was really what got me into stacking in general. And now I'm into copper and platinum and you, you name it. So <laughs> all over the place, huh? That's the way. Yeah. It works. Yeah. What's that? So that's the way it goes when you start little and then you start going, I, I just want to get crazy into this. Absolutely. Yeah. It's okay. Now, for sure. I don't know if you can do this in your store, but what about uh, a little bit of this stuff? Ammo. Yeah. So we, we love, our uh, second amendment rights and that's awesome this this is a very small portion of what pirate has at his bunker <laughs> but we do we do try to keep some in the store again we try to give people a little bit of everything they need uh we do definitely intend to grow that pile but literally that's probably our number one seller is ammo people come they're thrilled to be able to buy one or two boxes but uh, I am a firm believer, and trust me when I say uh, Pirate is very well prepped for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like we, we hear about guns and people are like, oh, you just want to go shoot people. It's like, no, listen, like if there's a prepping situation and there's a vulture out there or something crazy and I'm hungry, that vulture is going to be in my belly by the end of the night. And it's going to be because I have a weapon. <laughs> well, and what people don't understand is it's like any tool for the job. You know, people that aren't familiar with guns, that's not a problem at all. But many of them, they like to categorize it all into, well, you have this gun, you can do all these bad things with it. And the truth is, like any tool, there's a different tool for the job. And so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I've got stuff that I want to be able to get squirrels and rabbits with. I've got other stuff to take down quail and birds with. You know, and so it's not just that. And then, then truthfully, you've got some for self-defense and, and home defense, too. So, I mean, we, we want to be covered for all, all situations, for sure. <laughs> awesome. All right, a couple more. A couple more, and I'm going to leave you be. All right, right here. This is one of my favorite little tools right here. What do you think about yeah. that? Yes. Is that a Spyderco or a Kershaw? No, this is a, this is a Microtech. Oh, man, that is nice. Uh, I don't have anything that fancy. I got a really nice trade at home that I love. But uh, there's probably not a more handy tool you can have than having a blade of some sort in your in your preps. Um, not only for self-defense, but other things too. And we talk about it. They say that a uh, somebody wielding a knife, an experienced person with a knife, is more lethal within 10 feet than somebody with a gun. And, uh, you know, whether that's true or not, that really does give you a fighting chance. You know, it's funny. So I've done these drills before um, where you have a weapon in the holster. Let's say, you know, a Glock or something in the holster. And you have somebody in front of you with a knife. And it's only 10 feet away. And the challenge is to get your gun out and fire before they can stab you. And the person with the knife wins every time. Yeah. And, and that's honestly that people don't realize that but but knives really are the ultimate you know in defender for if you're just getting started get a knife of any variety because again you can use that for so many things it's not only a tool uh but it's a weapon as well and uh yeah you never know you'll use it if if you're just camping or if you're trying to survive you'll always use a knife all right now check out this thing right here i know it comes from china it's probably going to break on me in a little while. But. <laughs> so that's, that's a great thing to have. That's your two-way radio. And it doesn't matter that it's from China. This is a really similar one to that that we offer here at the store. Uh, these are fantastic for short, short communication. Uh, you know, my brother-in-law, he's three miles away. He has one. We can jump on the same channel and we can talk. Uh, pretty clearly with each other and that is no interference so it doesn't matter if cell phones go down or this or that 
But also, if you know your stuff and you know the channels, you can also pick up other people's information if you're trying to get some kind of intel. You can grab these for like 30, 40 bucks. It's a great thing to have in your preps for sure. Yeah, with ham radio, I mean, the sky's the limit on how much you want to do and how much you want to spend. But this is a good entry level right here. And I'm just an entry level kind of guy. But I got yeah, this absolutely. going on. Let's see, if, let's see if the station right here works. Yeah, tells me like, the awesome. weather and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a terrific one. And that's even the same brand, the Baofeng. Yeah, it's the same one we have. And, and again, it's just a price point thing. That's a great entry level radio. All right. So every zombie uh, movie I've ever watched, The Walking Dead and everything, people always want to raid the medicine. They always want to get like some kind of first aid supplies. They got to get the stuff for the infections. So that's a great idea, too. Right. Yeah. So literally first aid is the thing everybody forgets about. You don't think about it till you need it. And that's what sucks is everyone is going to need it at some point. So if you have time, get a kit. We actually, we upgraded, and we got a kit here that does trauma. So it's actually got a real tourniquet in it. It's got splints. It's got big damaged bandages. Uh, but first aid is something you're never going to go wrong with. Either it's going to save your life or somebody you know and love, and uh, that's really an inevitability. So band-aids, band-aids are a great start. I don't understand like in public school they teach you a lot of stuff that you're going to forget eventually when you get older how come they don't teach every kid in public school cpr 30 and 2 like why not why not for every you know why not they really should i mean they're so off course at this point i you know it just is what it is i'll tell you one of the greatest skills i learned and it was only because i went to an elementary school in england of all places in the first grade my parents, uh, my mom happens to be British. Uh, we ended up over there for a year. And in the first grade in England, they taught us how to sew needle and thread. The most basic thing, we sewed together a little bean bag. We did a couple of different stitches on some holes. I literally went on to use that to sew all my scout patches on my shirts, fix, fix holes and things, sew teddy bears for my kids. Literally, I have used that simple skill that I was taught at the age of six more than almost everything else that's ever been taught to me in school. And uh, those things are of value. So, you know, don't ever forget that stuff really needs to be taught to the next generation. And uh, you need to learn that stuff. You know, I remember sewing class uh, we had a little bit, too. And uh, I'm thinking, like, man, I'm a boy. Like, what am I doing in here? But you're right. It's something you end up you can use later. And I've used it. Uh, home ec when I was in there I was like all girls and then like two guys and I'm like man what am I doing in here but I know how to cook you know what I mean I can cook I can I can uh, do a couple tricks in the in the kitchen now thanks for those you know those skills that's awesome that's shop awesome. class I don't think they teach shop, teach shop class anymore but that was something I had a blast with and that was fun to learn that stuff I did as well and those those were basic skills I mean even shop class it was just learning some simple tools and, uh, and you take that on with you. If you don't ever get that experience, there's so many people, they're scared to even handle a power tool. And uh, it really is a disservice that, you know, whoever in their infinite wisdom has decided that those things aren't as important as, uh, you know, algebra two or trigonometry, or I, I don't even know, stuff that I didn't even bother to learn. But um, anyway. Somebody asked the question. I'm going to answer this one. They asked if I knew how to change a tire. And, you know, up until I was 18, 19 years old, had no idea. And then all of a sudden I got a job where the owner never wanted to have good tires on a vehicle. And I got flats <laughs> all the time. And so I had to learn quickly how to change a tire. But, yes, uh, you know, I can learn. I learned how to change a tire pretty quick uh, after having that job. But that's a good skill. That's a great skill. And, and honestly, I've changed as many tires for other people that had no idea how to change a tire as I've done for myself. So that's one of those things that <clears throat> you're, there's a lot of people that have never changed a tire, amazingly enough. It's not just women, but men too. And it's one of those skills that gets lost. So do your kids a favor, teach them how to change a tire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, I got you way off topic, but listen, thank you so much 
for showing me uh, the prep spot. It's really, really a cool store, man. I really enjoy this. Hey, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Check us out. Prep Spot and DeBerry. This is Pirate Prepping. Thank you, Speg. We will catch you on the flip side. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to have all your information down in the description of this video when it goes onto YouTube. So listen, if you're in the area, check them out. I know if, if I'm in the area, I'm definitely going to come by and see you and we'll do more videos. How about that? Sounds great. See you guys next time. Have a great night. <laughs> yeah, have a good night. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, so a big shout out to Pirate Prepping. Definitely check out his information down in the description of this video. Check him out and see what he's all about. Check out his store if you're local. That'd be awesome. Um, now, he gave some great advice for sure. As somebody who has a bachelor's degree, so I have a college education, if I could just give one bit of advice to people that are trying to you know, grow up and get a job and, you know, learn some trade skills, learn some skills beyond what college will teach you for sure. For instance, we talked about changing a tire. Um, learn to fish. Even if you hate fishing, some people actually like, uh, hate fishing. I don't, I don't understand how you could hate fishing. I go out there and not catch anything and just have so much fun. But fishing, just learning how to fish a little bit is a great skill. Learning how to tie a knot in that hook um, is actually a skill. Uh, my wife knows how to crochet. A lot of people don't know how to do it, but she can make a mean blanket. Gets cold out, uh, you know, maybe the roof blows off of my house. I'll be warm with these crocheted blankets she knows how to make. So there's all kinds of little skills out there and just learn something. Learn something beyond just, you know, being on the computer all day or things that you think you need in the work life. You know, think about things that you might need in a prepping kind of life too, because I know it's hard to imagine that we are all preppers by buying precious metals, but sure enough, we are. And that was cool seeing some silver and some copper in his store. I think that he could expand as much as he wants to with a store like that. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, tell me what you think down in the comments, of course. Let me know uh, if you're a prepper, if you want to go ahead and admit it or not. Uh, what kind of things you do, maybe some advice that you have. I'd love to see all those things. I got to go for now, though. Check out Pirate Prepping again. Spectacular, though, is out. Yeah.